Good morning, traders. It is Wednesday, December the 23rd. Taking a look at the charts, we've got the SP500. We're, we've got a very similar setup to what we saw last week, where the market kind of came down and got oversold here. And in pre-market trading, I was pointing out how we're likely to see a short-term bounce. And that's pretty much what we saw again uh, this week with this, uh, with the uh, the market having that sharp drop back down to a, a critical kind of pivot zone in the market here. A support zone and we had a little bit of a short-term oversold condition and yesterday the, the best looking kind of play to the upside we ended up picking the XLE ETF which had a nice pop there yesterday this morning we're seeing natural gas and crude oil continue to move up and the XLE is trading up uh, currently about 1.8 percent again this morning so we're gonna have a nice little pop bringing us up uh, to fill most of a gap from yesterday let me just show uh, the XLE real quick here XLE is trading somewhere up here around the uh, 60, 57, somewhere area right here, filling this gap. So we're going to have a nice pop there. Overall, we're going to have a little bit of resistance uh, eventually when we get to these to this declining trend line, which brings us somewhere to the around the 61 area. Now, overall, depending on the market opens here this morning and what the chart of crude oil looks like, since the XLE moves very similar to crude oil, uh, we may just uh, close the position and uh, lock in the profits and kind of uh, just uh, kind of sit back probably until the holiday is over. We do have these three surges to a low, which is a pattern I talked about, and usually we see a bounce back up here. And there is potential for this move to have a much larger move to the upside. Uh, so depending what you want to do today, uh, we may just close the position out, but you could just tighten your stop to break even or better and see if we get a further run into tomorrow as the market closes early around one o'clock and if we see that kind of the last little week uh, uh, the last trading of the year kind of continue to drift up it may continue higher but overall uh, today's pop and bounce could be just a quick easy money from an extreme situation an oversold kind of market condition and uh, you kind of get in get out and we wait for another setup now, taking a look at the markets, uh, let's take a quick look at bonds. Here's the TLT. We've seen, here it is here, increased volatility, so it's kind of struggling here. We do have a, a, a pretty critical kind of resistance, depending where you want to draw this line. Whoop, wrong tool. Uh, from majority of these highs, we've kind of got a down sloping trend line. We're flirting with that level. As you as we come up to these critical levels, you can see the volatility um, the, how the price is big gaps and chopping around you get big volatility big volatility again we're getting some volatility as we're flirting with this level and we're seeing bonds pulled back the last couple of sessions today bonds are going to gap down and trade a little bit lower money is rotating into equities and stocks and kind of out of these safe haven plays that being said come january i think we could see some strong selling in the stock market and of course i think bonds will break to the upside and have a strong rally now, just to kind of go back, uh, sorry for jumping around here, we'll go back to crude oil, take a look at oil this morning. Here is a chart of oil having a, a continued pop uh, this morning, and we'll see what kind of price action we get uh, with it this morning, and, and if it uh, is going to continue to kind of break and rally. If we just drop to the 30-minute chart, you can get a good picture of kind of the short-term price action over the last couple days. Yesterday, we had a, a pop in price. And it kind of consolidated throughout the night and, and then uh, or through the, the afternoon kind of fading back down. Once the markets closed, we end up seeing uh, oil have a nice pop, kind of consolidate through the night and then kind of continue to move up this morning. Now we're starting to see a little bit of selling step in here. And you can see we're, we're coming right into this previous consolidation through here. So now that the market's getting closer to opening and more traders are paying attention and all these people who... We're long over here or starting to uh, get back to the break even and moving out of their position and selling. So that's going to create a little bit of downward pressure. But that's what we saw yesterday. We saw some selling in the morning. As every, when crude oil popped up, we saw some selling in the morning and then we saw continued buying and a strong move up. So that, I think we had something we would see today is crude oil fade back down to potentially yesterday's highs or to around its closing price. And then we could see crude oil continue to move up. And eventually eat through that uh, kind of resistance zone. Looking at crude oil, this is the 30 minute, or sorry, natural gas, the 30 minute natural gas. We've had some strong moves to the upside with a series of bull flags. Uh, first kind of move up, halfway mark, there's our measured move. Then you could argue we've got a bigger move here, 
got the uh, bull flag, you got the second half of that measured move, and now you've got the even bigger move and the bull flag forming, and there's potential for natural gas to have a much larger move to the upside. So the series is like a series, uh, the market is a series of different, uh, the same patterns kind of revolving over and over again, and they're all fractal and they, they can expand and contract on each other. So there's potential here for another continued move, a big, a much larger move in natural gas. And if we do the same for crude oil, you can take a look here, a little bit different uh, of the price action. Let me zoom out on crude oil. Overall, crude oil is kind of a little bit of a, probably a short squeeze is kind of what I was anticipating from the, the market low that we had over here, seeing short start to unwind. If we can break this high over here, we're going to see a pretty sharp, I think, a rally in crude oil. Uh, but overall, we're seeing shorts kind of unwind, and this is likely going to be a little bit of a resistance zone that uh, we may not see crude oil break, which is one of the reasons why I'm kind of leaning towards this, getting out of our XLE this morning, locking in our couple percent gain, and going back to the sidelines. Because overall for crude oil, the, the trend is down. And we've got uh, some pretty critical uh, horizontal resistance right here. We've got several pivot lows. Price broke below it, became resistance, resistance, broke above it, kind of, and then below it again. And now we're hitting our head on this resistance zone. So if crude oil doesn't continue to move up, XLE is going to struggle and it might underperform. So the easy money has been made where the pop in crude oil has come up to a resistance zone. And uh, that's kind of uh, where we're at. Looking at gold and silver this morning, they're trading slightly lower, both down half a percent, very similar to uh, the chart of, uh, of bonds. We're just seeing money kind of uh, work, them, work itself out of uh, the safe havens and money is kind of rotating into equities. Light volume is going to kind of plague the market here again today and tomorrow. And if you take a look at gold, though, we've got a nice potential big bull flag forming here. And there's potential for a, a pretty big move to the upside. And if we go back to the daily chart of gold, gold and silver are both very similar. They look as though they're trying to form a bottoming formation. Let me zoom in a bit here. You could argue that uh, we've got increased volatility, so there are buyers and sellers struggling here. That it's a pretty critical zone uh, for the market. You could argue we've got a double bottom forming, which is a W formation. If we draw the whole thing out, if you once you break. The middle of the W, you can usually see that pattern flip to the upside. So whatever this depth of this pattern is, you can see that move to the upside. And that'll bring us to around the 1140, which is a pretty critical level here where it's acted as previous pivot highs and lows and breakdown zones where uh, price really picked up speed. So uh, if we see the equities market start to roll over in the next uh, couple weeks here come January, we're going to see money flow into gold and silver and that 1140 will be the next kind of resistance zone for for gold and now this is the daily chart i wouldn't be surprised we see it chop around and it could work lower or or, or struggle here or kind of eat through the resistance at this uh, 1080 area but it's starting to look as though it's trying to form a bottom and if there's any weakness in the stock market i think we're going to see money move into gold and silver now, take a quick look at the miners. Miners have a little bit uglier of a chart. They uh, they look somewhat bearish. Uh, we've had some big down red candles with pops, and but overall, it's a series of little bear flags, and sellers are still very strong in the market. Uh, pretty big support zone right down here that if this support level is broken, we're going to see uh, gold miners go into a free fall just like what we saw over here. This will be something similar where we'll see gold miners break down. They'll pick up speed and go into a parabolic waterfall panic sell-off. And that's something I think we could see happen significantly uh, if this if the support zone here is broken. And for that to happen, I think we need to see the stock market continue to grind higher for potentially a few more weeks. And uh, for the U.S. dollar to, to continue to hold up and move higher and we could get this wash out here in gold and silver but there's a lot kind of hinging on which way the dollar is going to go and if the equities market is going to rally overall or if it's going to start to uh, sell off with heavy volume uh, a lot of that's going to play into whether gold and silver and miners are going to be a safe haven play in a new area for money to move into anyways that's really it for this morning i'll talk to you in a little bit bye bye